Hey, it's Matt, your Average Gamer, and for this video, we're going to be going over Claws, because Claws got a big, pretty substantial buff in the recent patch, patch 1.09, so we're going to go over everything that involves that, and we're going to cover both sets of good Claws, which is the Bloodhound Claws, and then we have the Raptor's Talons as well, which we're going to start with here. First ones we're going to cover, as I mentioned, is the Raptor's Talons, which are really good on Keen Affinity. These are mainly a dex weapon. Now, they have innate bleed on them, and then with Keen, we can throw on Blood Flame Blade. And with the recent buff, I did notice the damage increase on Claws was pretty substantial. We were able to shred Mog on New Game Plus 7 with ease, as he wasn't even able to phase, and the damage was very good. The main stat you want to invest in, as I mentioned, is Dexterity. Go as high as you can in Dexterity, you're going to get a lot of damage out of these. Since the base damage was increased in patch 1.09, Claws are better than ever. Honestly, they're really quite good now. You're going to see a couple clips here that show them absolutely shredding on Journey 16. We're going to be going into 17 for the second set of Claws here. That's going to be in the second half of the video. For this, though, we're going to go over how good it is against mobs, against bosses in general. And this is something now, especially since it was buffed, it was pretty good to begin with, especially with Blood Flame Blade, and it's even better now. Just want to mention real quick that I'm going to keep you guys updated on patches as much as I can. These were one of the few things that I read in the notes that were upgraded or buffed. I'm going to be doing a couple other things that were buffed in the patches as well. I know Whip's got an increase and the Troll's Hammer now has Faith and Holy Damage, which is really cool. So that's something interesting we could do. But I wanted to mention real quick, there's an awesome Discord, so be sure to check that out. Almost 300 people in there. And definitely be sure to sub as well if you love overpowered PvE builds from software, Elden Ring in general. I want to be a part of that awesome community, so definitely be sure to join that. And let's get back to the Raptor's Talons, which are really good weapons. By the way, both of these that I'm going to show you are really good choices. I like the Raptor's Talons because it has a unique R2 flip, but they're both really good. You have heavy affinity for the Bloodhound's Claws as well keen on this and they both do really good damage now especially since in the patch they were buffed and they, they weren't even that bad at least in my opinion compared to other fist weapons in general in the game before now with the buff they're even better blood flame blade makes them better on top of that because you're going to get bleed as well and this is something where I was really happy with the buff because I actually noticed it. I know some of the times we're like, well, something gets buffed in the patch or they talk about something that they do in the patch. And then we go to check it out and it's not that big of a deal. But I noticed with Mog, with the Godskin Apostle here, we were able to do even more damage in between the proccing and we're able to proc bleed a couple of times. That's normal with Blood Flame Blade, but the base damage has been increased. By the way, the Ash of War that I ended up using on both was Bloodhound Step. Even though I really didn't use it that often, it was something that was nice to have on the side, especially if you're going to go into some of the late game bosses, you may want to use something like Bloodhound Step because it could help you. But there's a ton of different Ashes of War you can use in general. Again, we went for Keen Affinity on these and Blood Flame Blade. We went for Heavy. I'm going to show you that on Bloodhound Claws after this. And as far as both these, by the way, they're both good options. They really are. It's really up to you which you choose. I believe Bloodhound's Claws do have higher damage in general. And they're, since they were both buffed, obviously, they're both going to have higher damage. But as far as Bloodhound's versus Raptor's, I think Raptor's has the better R2, in my opinion, but more damage off of Bloodhound's Claws. You're going to see with the sleeping pots here again, we're going to show it off how much damage you can do. And keep in mind, we're just using R1 for the purpose of this to try to stack as many successive hits as we can, because that's really what our build is about in this instance. We're going to take advantage of that higher base damage, make it even higher, and then use buffs like Golden Vow, Flame Grant Me Strength, and then Blood Flame Blade to do as much damage and bleed as possible. And we're not even really able to see him phase because we're just taking HP off like ridiculously fast with these now. Again, the base damage having increased that bleed, the Blood Flame Blade is all a great combination. And here we are, we're going to test Bloodhound Claws out and give you the setup for that. We're going into Journey 17. And on Journey 17, as you know, we're on max scaling, so everything's going to have more HP. We're going to take on some early game bosses, but it'll still give you a good idea of how the damage is in general. So let's see how it is. And of course, we're going to start with the Grafted Scion here to see how much damage we can do to him. A particularly tough boss as you go into New Game Plus. He's not really meant to be. He's meant to be a wall your first time around. And then obviously after that, we're meant to turn the tables and beat up on him every time after that. So let's see how much damage we're able to do to him with Bloodhound Claws on Heavy Affinity. And the damage is quite good. We're able to absolutely shred his HP in a matter of seconds. And again, he doesn't have a ridiculous amount of HP, so keep that in mind. But he went down fairly quickly. Now, the Tree Sentinel here isn't notoriously tough either. But again, these are early games 
game boss is on new game plus seven so they all have a lot more hp and he is a little bit stout as far as resistances interestingly on the charged attack these actually have as the charged r2 i'm on xbox they have a bit of a pierce attack i believe it counts as pierce everything else though again is slash damage we're going to talk about that soon there is a downside to slash damage but in general we're able to build up a lot of damage quickly get some bleed on them and take them down fast and the main downside I can note for slash damage is actually all the dragons in the game. All the dragons in the game across the board have, I think, at least 30 or 35% resistance to slash damage. So keep in mind when you're fighting dragons, if you're getting a little less damage out of the claws, it's mainly because of their high resistance to slash damage. And I figured that's just something I'd mention if you're trying to take on any of the dragons in the game with the claws. It's just, if you don't, unless you use that R2 specifically, I think on the Bloodhound's claws where it might be pierced, Everything else is going to be slash damage, which they're just really strong against. But again, I'm really happy with the way these came out. I, I know as far as the video, I'm trying to be as descriptive as possible on the weapons. Obviously, we went with Keen for Raptors and we went with Heavy for Bloodhounds, but I'm really happy with the base damage increased. I feel like it's definitely noticeable. It makes these a lot stronger. Wait till you see Margit and Godric here shortly, which will be the last two we face before we go over build stats, equipment, everything you need to know as far as this build goes, and to be able to absolutely shred bosses with the claws in Elden Ring. We're going to show off Margit here, who we're able to shred for massive damage. Wait till you see this. Obviously, we're going to use the shackle here. We're going to go for as many hits as we can, build up those successive attack hits, and literally do massive damage to him. He's not even able to get to his second phase, and he went down very fast. We just have Godric to show off. We're mainly going to highlight jump attacks, see how much damage we can do on Godric, just solely basically doing jump attacks, and we're going to show off mobs one more time here. Very, very strong against mobs, something that you could just shred and pretty much run right through them. By the way, all of the claws, hence the claw talisman, so it kind of makes sense, seem to do a lot more damage with the jump attacks. So even though they can sometimes be difficult to land, and you're not getting four or six hits out of the jump attacks versus the curved swords, twin blades, and all that, you are able to get pretty good damage with the jump attacks in general, and a little bit of posture damage as well, along with every single jumping heavy R2. The knight, don't worry about the knight because he's easy for us since we have, obviously, Bloodhound Claws. And I probably could have used Bloodhound Step here to show off the Ash of War a little bit, but you guys probably know that. You've seen it probably a million times, whether it's PvP or you used it yourself in PvE. Even after the nerf, it's still quite good. But as you can see there, we're able to take down the knight very quickly on a Godric. Now for Godric, as I mentioned, I mainly wanted to focus on jump attacks, essentially trying to get in as many as possible to see if I could do any posture damage, but mainly to see how much damage I can get off the jump attacks with the Raptor's Black Feathers and the Claw Talisman. New game plus 7, Godric obviously has a lot more HP, as do all of the bosses, but that's not going to matter that much for us because, again, we're doing a good amount of damage, we're doing a little bit of bleed as well. Even when you do the jump attacks, you might still end up with one proc, but as far as the jump attacks go, as you can see there, we're able to get really good damage out of them. This was actually when I really started to like Bloodhound's Claws too, because I like the Raptor's Talons a lot. Again, I really like that R2 flip. It's, it's really cool, the fact that you can also get the successive hits bonus off of the R2. It's a charged attack that will hit multiple times. It's really cool, but Bloodhound's Claws are cool too. They do a lot of damage on the jump attacks. I think they have higher AR in general, and they're a lot of fun to use. All right, now it's finally time to get into stats, equipment, talk about everything you'll need to know for this build so you can just breeze through the game with the claws at this point because, yes, they're really powerful. The buff on 1.09 was fantastic for these. Let's get into equipment. For equipment, we have heavy bloodhounds claws, obviously heavy affinity. Any seal, we have the white mask, raptor's black feathers, lord of blood's exaltation, rotten wing sword insignia, Melissa's prosthesis. We have the claw talisman. Then we have the thorny tier. We're also using the faith tier. To add in some buffs as well for stats i want to make this very easy to understand as easy to understand as possible if you're going with the first setup on the raptor's talons you're going to go really high dexterity if you're going for the bloodhound setup which obviously we have here then you're going to go for that 80 or 90 strength because we're going to be using them in heavy affinity the rest of the stats are really up to you it's up to you what you want to do as far as vigor endurance all that kinds of stuff everything as far as armor and stuff is really up to you i leave that up to the player i'm just going for damage here i, I like glass cannon builds so i don't mind this let's get into buffs now for both of these it's actually really really simple on how to do buffs this is pretty basic stuff here but i'm going to show you guys i don't go crazy with the buffs for this setup because you don't really need it you just need a couple basic things we're going to drink our tier first so we can do a couple buffs golden vow i pretty much always use then we're going to use Flame Grammy Strength, and then obviously Blood Flame Blade, 
after we tap her off our FP. Then I have the Raptor's Talons here, and then obviously we have that really cool R2 flip that you're gonna see in a second here, right there. It's a really cool flip you can do with that. I really like the R2 on the Raptor's Talons. I know that was a lot for one video, but I hope I went over both in the changes and you're able to see the damage increase in patch 1.09, and I hope that's helpful and informative as far as the claws go. They did get a buff and it is absolutely noticeable. It makes them better than they were, and they're quite good now, to be honest. If you're not on that Discord, you definitely got to join that. There's literally 300 people in there. It's super active. And if you're not subbed to this channel, if you love overpowered PvE builds, definitely be sure to check out all the awesome builds that are on the channel. Be sure to sub. Thanks for watching. And as always, I will catch you guys there.